an honor to teach Sunday school, and uh, I've been thinking a lot about all of you and praying for all of you, and uh, at Breen Bible Society, you've been uh, prayed for, uh, for the for Sandy, for the church, for Pastor Kurth, and uh, we feel your loss at Breen Bible Society as well, because Dave was such a a uh, hard worker for us as well, writing articles at the Brian Bible Society and working on the Grace Bible that is coming uh, eventually and part of the committee. He was heavily involved in all of that. And we will recognize that when the Grace Bible is published, uh, Dave's work that he had uh, with uh, the Grace Bible. And so we really appreciate appreciated Dave. And it's wonderful to have our hope, isn't it? And uh, you know, that reunion that we have. And the reunion that could happen every day, uh, because the Lord could come and take us home. We could be gathered together in the sky with our fellow members of the body of Christ at our home. And so every day we have hope of reunion, and uh, it's a wonderful hope that we have in Christ. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11. I want to read chapter till the end of the chapter and then at the beginning of chapter 2, verse 1 as well. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went on into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God and me. Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. So does everybody have a, a copy of the chart? Okay, does anybody need one? Val, you need one. There's one more that's needed in the back. Or two, I think. Thank you. So the following is from a man applying for a pastorate. And it goes like this. Gentlemen, understanding your pulpit is vacant, I should like to apply for the position. I have many qualifications. I've been a preacher with much success and I've also had success as a writer. Some say I'm a good organizer. I've been a leader most places I've been. I am over 50 years of age. I've never preached in one place for more than three years. In some places I have left town after my work has caused riots and disturbances. I must admit that I have been in jail three or four times, but not because of any real wrongdoing. My health is not good, but I still get a lot, a great deal done. The churches I have established and preached in have been small, though located in several large cities. I have not got along well with religious leaders in towns where I have preached. In fact, some have threatened me and even attacked me physically. If you can use me, I shall do my best for you, 
Signed, the Apostle Paul. Now that kind of resume uh, today probably wouldn't result in many uh, uh, responses and uh, interest in having him be pastor or leader of their assembly. But Paul's life was truly remarkable. It was a life of faith. It was a life used by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a life that he used for his fullest for the Lord's fullest, for for His honor and for His glory. So Paul, Paul was a zealous guy. He was zealous in his persecution when he did not believe in Jesus Christ. But then after he believed in Christ, his zeal was turned towards the truth and towards what was right and true. And so he suffered much, he labored hard, hard he traveled far all to serve the Lord, to make the gospel of the grace of God known out of His burden for lost souls. And the church is challenged in Philippians 4.9, um, and the next one there just, to follow Him. Now we often talk about following Paul in doctrine, but we are also to follow His example in His practice as well. And those that's what's brought out in Philippians 4 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So we have God's promises that we live a life like the Apostle Paul. The God of peace is going to be with us all the way and give us the peace that only He can give. The purpose of the Brian Bible Society, uh, since 1940, since its inception by uh, Pastor C.R. Stam, is to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. And we print our magazine, the Brian Searchlight. We print all of our literature. We uh, have our television program, all for that purpose. And anything that we do at Brian Bible Society, anything new that we might uh, go into and, and do is based on that purpose to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. At Breen Bible Society, our friends that call or email uh, often have ideas and they have suggestions for new literature. And uh, so we get a lot of ideas thrown at us. And some of them stick to the wall. Some of them are, are really good ideas. And last year I spoke on the phone with Brother John Lynch in Idaho. And we had a great conversation around the word rightly divided. And during the course of the phone call, John recommended that Brian Bible Society produce a timeline chart of Paul's ministry in the book of Acts. And he felt that it would be helpful uh, for people coming to an understanding of the word rightly divided by having a visual depiction of when the important events in Acts took place, the dates and locations of Paul's travels, and where Paul's letters were written, and what time and what order. And I thought John's idea was tremendous. And so I told him that on the phone. I said, I- I'm going to take this up with our board, John. I'm going to see what they think. And when I went to the board, they thought it was a tremendous idea, and they gave me free reign to, to go forward with it. Then I began to study, and then I began to research the project, and then I realized this is not as easy as it sounds. Uh, it sounds like a good idea, but there's a lot of differing opinions, as for one, to the order of Paul's letters, oh, the, the order they were written. The timing of various events in the book of Acts, such as the Jerusalem Council, is one that's often heavily debated. But when you put something in print and you author it, it's like you're putting a stake in the ground and you're announcing to everybody that this is where I stand. And so I had to come to conclusions and convictions. And I relied heavily on prayer. Uh, doing this project with the Spirit's help and based on my personal study of the Word. I did a lot of comparing spiritual with spiritual and going back and forth in the book of Acts. And the book of Galatians chapter 1 here is a very important 
a chapter as far as putting a timeline together of Paul's ministry. And so I also consulted learned men who are skillful in the Word of God. And I consulted, one of the men I consulted was Dave Stewart. And I emailed Dave and I asked him a couple times, a couple different places where I was really struggling. And Dave came back at first with the email of, let me think about this a little bit. <laughs> and then, and then later in the day, I'd get another email after he had thought about it. And I got a, an insightful email, uh, which always Dave was so insightful with the word. And so, Based on all of these things, prayer, comparing spiritual with spiritual, consulting men skillful in the Word of God, this, this is what you have in your hands, uh, that we came, that I came together, how it all came together. And I found out in May or early June, after the chart was completed, that uh, I asked Christine at Breen Bible Society to send John Lynch in Idaho a, a complimentary pack of the chart because it was based on his idea. And when she went to to send the order, she found out that John had passed away uh, in in February. He was 83 years old and had uh, passed away before he ever got to see the finished product. But I did have a... a snail mail call it uh, conversation with them where I told them I was working on it and that it was coming and we were it wasn't going to be long and so he did know and responded to that uh, that letter that that it was being worked on so I was glad that he knew that uh, before he went home to be with the Lord I'd like to walk through the chart with you this morning and to give you a better feel for the chart as hopefully you'll see the benefit of it. And uh, first you'll see that on the inside and on the very bottom left, you'll see I was not very brave. That I started off with uh, all dates are approximate. So, uh, so I didn't, I'm not dogmatic about the dates because even Paul's conversion you can find anywhere from 33 to 35 or 36 uh, A.D. There's a lot of different ideas of when Paul's conversion took place. But I believe the chart overall is accurate within one to three years. And so that's really the purpose of the chart is to give you uh, an overall picture of Paul's ministry. We don't have to be exact on the dates and to be exactly right just to show the 33 year ministry he had and the important events and approximately when each event took place and how far one event is from another and so that's the overall purpose of the chart and you'll find that the top half of the chart uh, deals with the main events of Paul's ministry in the brown section Above the, uh, on the top. And then corresponding with that on the back side, you'll find a short synopsis of Paul's ministry. So the inside deals with the main events, and then the outside deals with the short synopsis. And that synopsis has to do with Paul's unique calling as the apostle of the Gentiles, God's purpose in raising up a new apostle following the temporary fall of the nation of Israel. Because we want this also to be used as a tool, a tool for you and others to, to share and to teach and to help others see Paul's unique apostleship and message. It's a timeline of Paul's ministry, and as we know and as we stand for, uh, we understand that Paul has a unique apostle, that he's not the 13th apostle of the kingdom and that he wasn't supposed to be the twelfth apostle of the kingdom, that Paul was raised up uniquely by the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven because he had a, a new dispensation, a new message, the revelation of the mystery to make known to this apostle, um, an apostle for the Gentiles under grace. So the middle has pictures across the middle 
in the order that Paul initially visited these locations in his ministry, a lot of times in his first, second, third apostolic journeys, he went back to these places later. But these are the places he initially, and in the order he initially went to them. And these are real locations. And that's important when you come to uh, Scripture. And it's, a, it's like an apologetic uh, way to defend the faith, to show these real locations from the Bible that exist today and that are in history and that archaeologists uh, dig up and find uh, because the Bible is true in every way. And I've had the privilege to, to be in a few of these places and that little riverside by Philippi is personally meaning, meaningful for me uh, because that was the riverside where Paul went out and found the the women that were praying in this river still there uh, beside Philippi, the city of Philippi, and the ruins of Philippi. And I was able to sit there by myself, I, I separated off from the tour that we were on, and just sat by that river for a little while. And it was quiet, and it was peaceful. And I thought about Paul in Acts 16, coming to Philippi, coming to that riverside, leading Lydia to Christ, the first convert in Europe. And then I thought about Paul being the apostle of the Gentiles. I'm thinking about this this woman that trusted Christ. And I'm thinking, I'm the fruit. One of the fruits. One of the many fruits. Of Paul going into Europe. The Gospel of the grace of God being trusted and believed by a Gentile woman. And then the, how that gospel spread into Europe, and then two thousand years later, when you know after it went across the, the ocean into the Americas from Europe, and how the gospel came to me, and saved as a young man in the uh, early nineteen eighties, a Gentile, and I had no hope without God in the world, according to Ephesians two. And I have this relationship with the living God by grace through faith alone in Christ because of Paul and this little riverside conversion uh, sitting by, by this where these women came out to pray every day. And so it's very meaningful to think uh, about how God cared about the nations, that He raised up an apostle to the nations to bring the truth to them that we might be saved, that we might have eternal life, that we might have hope. So below the pictures is the books that Paul wrote. And then correspondingly in the back in the white section, you'll find the uh, explanation of the order that Paul penned his epistles. And we'll walk through that this morning, uh, Lord willing, if we have time here, and uh, go through the order of Paul's epistles and where he wrote them from. And then you go below the the books that are written, and then you find the added details of Paul's ministry. This corresponds with the brown section up on top, but it gives more information on the bottom uh, to show the important events, the primary locations of his apostolic journeys. And then finally on the very bottom of the chart is something that goes back to my father's Acts class that I took at Brain Bible Institute in which he drilled in to every one of the students that we had to know Acts 13, 46, 18, 6, and 28, 28. And so when I put it together a chart about Paul's ministry in the book of Acts, I had to include that because that was drilled into me by my dad of how important these three references are. Uh, to the book of Acts and to that book being a transition book from Israel to the Gentiles and God turning to the nations to have a program with us and how Paul told the nation of Israel, we turn to the Gentiles. From henceforth, I will go to the Gentiles. The salvation of God is sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. And so those are important references. And then correspondingly on the back on the blue section on the bottom, uh, to give an explanation about Paul's threefold pronouncement. 
So as you look at the chart, you'll notice Paul's conversion act in uh, AD 35. Then look at where Paul's first apostolic journey is, and you'll see AD 46. And then look at the very end, and you'll see AD 68 approximately when the Apostle Paul died. And you find from 35 to 68, that's a 33-year ministry. Then you see that the first, from 35 to 46, is 11 years. That's one-third of his life and ministry from the point that he was saved. And so prior to Paul's first apostolic journey, he carried out an extensive ministry among the Gentiles during those 11 years. He preached Christ in Damascus in Syria. He preached Christ in Tarsus in Cilicia. And, according to Galatians 1.21, other places in the regions of Syria and Cilicia. On the second apostolic journey, as Paul was, had, they had that, that split between Paul and Barnabas, and Paul took Silas and Barnabas took John Mark, Luke records how after the split, Paul went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches in Acts 15 verse 41. Now, during first, Paul's first apostolic journey, Now remember, he's leaving in Acts 15 for his second apostolic journey. During his first apostolic journey, he never traveled to the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Instead, he went straight to Cyprus in his first apostolic journey. On his second apostolic journey, he went through the regions of Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. The only time the churches could have been established was during the 11 year ministry between AD 35 and 46, which Galatians 121 talks about his early ministry. And so there was Gentile churches established during those 11 years by the apostle Paul. And so that's important to realize what Paul was doing early in his ministry and how he was uh, in Tarsus. And you go back just for a second. Tarsus was around this area here in Cilicia, and we know of Saul uh, as Saul of Tarsus. And so he was in Cilicia, in Tarsus specifically, we know, and he was... But I think, anytime a person trusts Christ as their personal Savior, your mind goes to your loved ones, to your family. And you think, you want them to have the life, the hope that you have in Christ as well. And so I believe after Paul got saved, and after after the three-year ministry he had in Damascus, then he goes up into the regions of Cilicia, and specifically in Tarsus. We know he was in Tarsus according to Acts. And he, I believe he was trying to reach his family for Christ. And, uh, and he might have had success because later in the book of Acts, you find Paul's nephew being one who saved his life because of these, this vow these guys took to take Paul's life. And it was Paul's nephew who clued uh, the... Um, clued in everybody into the plot against Paul's life. And so he might have led some of his family to Christ as a result. But we find, I don't believe, when you read Galatians chapter 1 and verse 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Based on that passage, a lot of times you'll hear teachings that say Paul was in Arabia for three years receiving the revelation of the mystery. 
And I personally don't believe that that is reading like that. I believe that uh, Paul had the majority of those three years in Damascus. I think he had a three-year ministry of most all those years in the city of Damascus. And you read about Acts 15, and, or Acts chapter 9, excuse me, about Paul's ministry in Damascus and and how he preached in the synagogues and confounded the Jews. And there was a lot going on during the time in Damascus that he was there. But I believe like Moses received the law from the Lord over a period of 40 days and 40 nights. And like the 12 apostles after our Lord rose again, they had a 40 day uh, post resurrection, the Lord had a 40 day post resurrection ministry where he taught them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And so I think it's likely and probable and possible that Paul had a, a 40 day uh, period in Arabia in which the Lord appeared to Paul. And then, just as an interesting side note, in this very book, uh, Paul talks about Mount Sinai in Arabia. And so he talks about being in Arabia here. And so there's a lot of conjecture, possibility, that maybe Paul went to Mount Sinai in Arabia to receive grace from the Lord. But instead of law, like Moses received at Mount Sinai, that was 1,500 years earlier than Paul. but So, the bottom left there, you find the order of events in Paul's early ministry. He goes to Damascus, visits Arabia, returns to Damascus, then go, after three years goes up to Jerusalem, and from Jerusalem he goes to Tarsus. And so, after three years, Paul went up to Jerusalem for the first time. And there and then he meets Peter for the first time. So it's been three years since the Apostle Paul was saved. And then he goes and sees Peter and visits him for about two weeks. He sees none of the apostles. And then verse 19, uh, Paul adds, Save James, the Lord's brother. And James wasn't even one of the twelve. He was a secondary apostle. So he only saw one of the apostles. Uh, uh, Twelve apostles and a secondary apostle of James, the Lord's brother. And so that word visit even is interesting. Uh, I went up and abode with him 15 days. Excuse me, abode. That word abode in the original just means visit, meet, get acquainted. It's not a... Uh, Paul's whole point of this from verse 11 to chapter 2, verse 1 and beyond, is to certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it. That is, everything that follows is based on that and what he's trying to prove, that certification, that truth. And he says, behold, before God, I lie not in verse 20. He's driving it home that the twelve apostles did not teach him his message. And he shows the separation that he had from the twelve. And then it took even three years before he ever even saw Peter. And for that, it was only two weeks. It was just a short visit. And then he went back. And, you know, the... Uh, the fact that he goes back in verse 21. He abode with them 15 days. And then verse 21, afterwards I came into the regions of Syria. That's significant. This is, this is your apostle. This is typical of your apostle too. The fact that Paul had this hit out on his life to take his life in Damascus. Because the Jews got so enraged by his preaching that they watched the gates and they stationed people around the gates of the wall of Damascus. 2 Corinthians 11 tells us they used the uh, governor of Damascus 
to give the use of the gar- a garrison of soldiers to also watch for the Apostle Paul to capture him and kill him. And so Paul gets let down by a basket in the wall. And he escapes in the middle of the night out of their hand. He goes to Jerusalem for 15 days. But then he goes right back. <laughs> right back to Syria. Right where the, he was a marked man, where they were looking for him. But he, you find that he's uh, the grit, the burden for souls, the danger he put himself in. You read Second Corinthians 11, you find about all the perils that he put himself in. And year after two weeks, and the time it took him to travel from Damascus to Jerusalem back up into Syria, and you find maybe a month or two, he's right back in the middle of that area preaching Christ. And we know he established churches during that time. So, i got to figure out where I'm at. I got all distracted. <laughs> okay, after... The end of this time, this 11 year time period, a great famine hit the world. Relief was sent to the brethren in Judea and Jerusalem. Barnabas had gone to Tarsus to find Saul. He brought him to Antioch. We learn about this in Acts 11, 25 to 26. The disciples at the Antioch church send this relief uh, and resources through Barnabas and Saul, and that results in the second visit to Jerusalem. In Acts eleven twenty seven to 30, that's the relief that was sent by Paul and Barnabas to those in Judea and Jerusalem as a result of the famine. Following this, Barnabas and Saul returned to Antioch from Jerusalem. This is where John Mark joined them. In Acts 13... You find the first, this apostolic journey. This is after 11 years now of his ministry. Saul and Barnabas separated by the Holy Spirit. The church at Antioch sends them out on Paul's first apostolic journey. His first journey takes him to the island of Cyprus, then up to the region of Galatia where he visited the cities of Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby, and churches were established. We find that very clearly noted in the book of Acts. Churches were established in those four cities, and elders were appointed. Paul faced persecution at this time from the Jews. The Lord, when he raised up Paul, told Ananias, he's going to show him how much things he must suffer for my name's sake. And you find that throughout the book of Acts. The opposition against Paul. The message of grace that he was taking to the nations. And the Jews getting stirred up everywhere he went. And Paul causing... I always like the, the old quote. that Everywhere Paul went, he either ca- caused a riot or a revival or both. It's everything, everywhere Paul went. And... One of the accounts, one of my favorite accounts in Acts, again showing the grit of the Apostle Paul, he's stoned in Lystra. And he's laying there, and they all presume that he's dead, and he might have been. And But then he stands up, and after he stands up, he goes right back into the city. He doesn't see, he doesn't go, let's go to the next town. You know, that's after you get stoned. Maybe I shouldn't stay here. Instead, he goes right back into where the city where he was stoned. Yeah, kind of like Paul was going back to Syria. At the end of this journey, Paul returned to Antioch. He always returned to his sending church, the church at Antioch, uh, in Syria, that is. There's two Antiochs you gotta differentiate between in the book of Acts. And so he goes back to his sending church. And upon returning, the question of circumcision and salvation led to the council of Jerusalem and Paul's third visit uh, to Jerusalem and the Jerusalem council. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Now, one 
If there's one verse that gave me the most consternation and the one I most heavily debated and caused me to walk around my office and around BBS the most as I thought about, what does this mean? It's Galatians 2 verse 1. Because in a lot of ways, for the timing of this chart, it provides the timing for Paul's ministry. And so this was one of the areas where I sent an email to Dave Stewart. And Dave was the one that gave me a piece about what this verse means. Because I struggled and it was, it was bothered. It's one of those things where if I didn't have a deadline, I probably would have waited a couple years until I, I had the Spirit give me more comfort about what it means. But I, I needed to come to a conclusion. And so I reached out. And Dave, that was one of the ones where he said, let me get back to you. And then he came back with this, this really... Uh, he brought the truth home. He gave me comfort about that I believe it's correct. That it's based from his conversion. That those 14 years, as you'll see, A.D. 35, his conversion. A.D. 49, 14 years after. Galatians, based on Galatians 2, verse 1. Because the overall point of Paul's timeline of events from chapter 1, verse 11, to chapter 2, verse 1, Again, it's to show that he did not receive his gospel of man, neither was I taught it. And that after he was saved, verses 16 and 17 says, Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Paul's point wasn't to describe how long it was between trips to Jerusalem, but to show the separation he had from the twelve since his conversion. And so for 14 years, Paul is saying here that he had little to no contact with the twelve, save Peter once in Jerusalem, 15 days. Which Paul Paul wrote to, to teach that his gospel was received by the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you were to add up all the years covered in this passage... The total shouldn't include only, and which is often done, the, ver- the three years of verse 18. A lot of times, and even Pastor C.R. Stan, I'm sorry to say, I don't agree with him on this, but that's okay. We don't agree with everybody, everything everybody teaches everywhere anyway. But that... A lot of times those three years are added to the 14 years and it's made to be 17 years since his conversion. But if you're consistent, and this is what Dave pointed out to me, verse 21 should be taken into consideration. That it should include the afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and he spent approximately six years there. So... If you have the three years of verse 18, you have the six years of verse 21, and then the 14 years, if you add those, if you stack those, then you're out to 23 years. And if you go to A.D. 35 and you add 23 years, you're way over on the right side of the chart here with A.D. 58. And there's not enough time to get three apostolic journeys in there between the time that he died. And so it just came to a conclusion. I came to a piece that the three years uh, going up to Jerusalem, the six years in the regions of Syria and Cilicia are included within the 14 years of Galatians 2 verse 1. And so it's 14 years based since his conversion. And and the rest of the chart then flowed. It was easy to put together from that point as far as dates go um, from that point on. So the order of Paul's letters is often debated. I believe Galatians is the first epistle Paul penned. Paul addressed this letter. Let's turn over one page. 
to chapter 1, verse 2. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches, plural, of Galatia. Paul doesn't identify the churches here. We know there's plural, more than one, uh, where Paul had personally ministered. Now, Paul in this book describes how he preached the gospel of grace through infirmity in the flesh. And he talked about these Galatians, how they would have plucked out their own eyes and given them to Paul out of their care, out of their love for Paul, and how they received him as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus, it says in Galatians. So these are people Paul personally knew, knew very well, who cared about him, he cared about them. The book of Acts only mentions four Galatians, Galatian cities that Paul visited. Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. And the next one, Jess. I know I'm jumping all over the place. <laughs> oh, back one. Yeah. So you see these cities in the region of Galatia, Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, Derby. So those are the only four Galatian cities mentioned in the book of Acts. Churches were established during his first apostolic journey in these cities. All these cities were in southern Galatia. Now, Paul visited Galatia in all three of his apostolic journeys. It says that he went up throughout the region of Galatia in Acts 16.6. In Acts 18.23, in the third apostolic journey, he went all over the country of Galatia, strengthening all the disciples. But no locations are mentioned in the north of Galatia as he went up further up in the, in the region of Galatia. Only the four cities in southern Galatia are mentioned after his first apostolic journey where we know he established churches. We're not sure that churches were established in northern Galatia. It only says he went throughout the region and then he strengthened all the disciples. So there were believers in northern Galatia, but we don't know about any churches. But in southern Galatia, we know there was churches. And I believe after Paul returned from his first apostolic journey, he, Galatians 1.6 says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I believe Paul is writing the churches of Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby after his first apostolic journey. Acts 14.28 gives the clue that there was plenty of time to write a letter because after his first apostolic journey, it says he abode long time with the disciples in Antioch. So there's a time frame there even for him to write the book of Galatians. And so I believe Galatians is the first letter written by the Apostle Paul. But good men, learned men in the Word of God, teach that First and Second Thessalonians are the first books. And you should take that into consideration because I'm not the authority. And so it goes back to what the Word of God says. Uh, but where I believe and where I had to put my stake in the ground was Galatians. On Paul's second missionary journey, he went to Thessalonica. He established a church there. He's driven out uh, by persecution. He goes to Berea. He leaves Timothy and Silas behind. He goes to Athens and then to nearby Corinth. In Acts 18, uh, let me go back there. I'll point that out. So Paul, he comes across into Neapolis, Philippi, and he travels through Amphipolis and Apollonia, comes to Thessalonica, establishes a church, is driven out by persecution, goes to Berea. The people in Thessalonica aren't happy, or the Jews in Thessalonica are still mad at them. They, they chase them over to Berea, and that sends Paul by sea 
down to Athens, then to nearby Corinth. Timothy and Silas, though, were left behind when Paul went alone to Athens. And so, now on the next one, Jess. In Acts 18, while Paul was in Corinth, after he goes from Athens to Corinth, he's there for a year and a half and he wrote the two letters to the Thessalonians. And there's a proof of this when you compare these two passages of Scripture, which both refer to Timothy's return to Paul in Corinth from Macedonia and Timothy giving a good report of how the Thessalonians were doing. In Acts 18.22, we learn how Paul returned to his sending church at Antioch. Then he launches out on his third apostolic journey. And on that journey, in Acts 19, we learn how he stayed and he ministered in Ephesus, there in Asia, or Asia Minor. And here, during his stay in Ephesus, he wrote the book of 1 Corinthians. Ephesus was in Asia Minor, and 1 Corinthians 16.19 says they, Paul wrote them, the churches of Asia salute you. So that gives you the clue that Paul was in Asia as he wrote the book of 1 Corinthians. Leaving Ephesus, Paul traveled up to Macedonia. According to Acts 20 and verse 1, he refers to this in 2 Corinthians 2.13. That I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. And from Macedonia is where Paul wrote Second Corinthians. In Acts 20, verses 2-3, to 3, Paul goes to Greece, specifically Corinth in Greece. Spent three months there with a brother named Gaius, here in Corinth. And during his third apostolic journey, he wrote the book of Romans. When he was in Corinth, we know he was in Corinth because Gaius is mentioned at the end of Romans. And Gaius is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1.14 as a member of the church there. And Paul wrote, Gaius, mine host. So we know he was in Corinth when he wrote Romans. And he says, and of the whole church saluteth you, Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you. And there's a really cool, and to me it's really cool, uh, there's uh, an encouraging extra biblical proof in Corinth called the Erastus stone. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, Paul wrote in, Cor- in Romans, as he wrote from Corinth, and in Corinth, they uncover, as in all their archaeological digs, they uncover this stone that has the name Erastus on it. And it's, it's from the excavation of a first century road. It's basically their street signs, except they had them on the ground. And they, they carved into the stone. And Erastus had a street named after him because of the work that he did for the city. And it was like a, an honor to Erastus for the work that he had done. And it makes mention of him, and, and it even makes mention of him as a public official, which Paul says, Erastus, the chamberlain, the treasurer, that is, of the city of corn. So you have these little extra biblical proofs, which are real encouraging for our faith. And I gotta finish up, don't I, Pastor Curtis? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, in Acts twenty-one, Paul's arrested in Jerusalem. A false accusation was made against him to bring that he brought a Gentile into the temple. A riot ensues in which the chief captain, the Roman chief captain of the city, and the Roman soldiers rescue Paul from being torn apart. Under the cover of darkness, Paul is transported to Caesarea. He remains there a prisoner for two years. He stands before Governor Festus, and he appealed his case to Caesar. And then Paul is taken to Rome. He has a stormy voyage uh, to Rome that ended with a shipwreck on the island of Malta. From there, Paul's taken up to Rome. 
He's taken into a rented house where he spends two years. And in that rented house, under as a prisoner, Paul wrote four letters. The prison epistles. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. You can find Paul writing about his bonds in each of those letters. Paul's last three epistles were written after the Acts period. After his first Roman imprisonment, and during the time of his liberty, he wrote 1 Timothy and Titus. And we don't know where he wrote those letters from. But we do know that he was rearrested and re-imprisoned in Rome where he wrote 2 Timothy in anticipation of his impending death. And to summarize, during the book of Acts, Paul wrote six letters. Galatians, after Acts 14. 1 Thessalonians in Acts 18, 2 Thessalonians in Acts 18, 1 Corinthians in Acts 19, 2 Corinthians in Acts 20, and Romans in Acts 20. Then during the two years of his Roman imprisonment, he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon. I believe Paul was released from prison. And then he wrote 1 Timothy and Titus. Then he's rearrested and he wrote 2 Timothy in prison in Rome prior to his death. I had an opportunity to see, uh, as I was uh, the benefit of the, my own chart, when I uh, was trying to figure out and prove that Paul was set at liberty after his first Roman imprisonment. And one of the proof texts is when Paul wrote, pro, wrote the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou come, bring with thee. So I thought, well, when was the last time Paul was in Troas? And so I looked, and in the very middle, in the middle fold, you'll find ministry in Macedonia, Greece, and Troas. That was the last time Paul had been in Troas. And then you look at when Paul was in prison and facing his death, and you compare the dates, and that's 57 to 67, or 68, and I thought, that's a long time to remember that you have a coat in Troas that you left behind 10 years earlier. And you think, I don't think that coat's there anymore if it was there from 10 years ago. And plus, you probably wouldn't even remember that there is a coat in Troas after 10 years. And so that proved to me that he had to have been released and had been recently to Troas, where he recently forgot his coat and asked for his coat to be brought by Timothy along the way from Ephesus to Rome to visit Paul. And so just a simple little thing like that made me realize, hey, this is helpful <laughs> so, for myself. I needed it. And so I was glad for it. But I hope that you see the benefit of it. And I hope that you'll use it. And I hope you'll share it with others. And to use it as a tool, both for your understanding of Paul's ministry, but also the importance of seeing his ministry in the sense of his unique ministry as the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, for us, for the body of Christ under grace, and that it could be used as a tool to show how, like as the threefold pronouncement points out, how God turned to the Gentiles and started a new program uh, following uh, Israel's fall. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this time in your word. We're thankful for the blessing of your word, the privilege of your word, that we have it in our possession and that we can read it and learn from it and study it and dig in and and find the rich and precious truths and jewels and riches that we have in Christ. And we're just thankful for for us having a for you having a program with us under grace uh, that we might have a relationship with you through the Lord Jesus Christ and by faith alone and having a home and hope in heaven and eternal life in Him. We just praise You. We thank You for it. And we know that Paul's ministry was set upside for that purpose, that we 
uh, that salvation might go to the Gentiles, us, the people of the nations, and we thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen.